I'm going to say it's the month of fall. This is the leaf blower season. It certainly is the time of the year that people use leaf blowers the most and think about buying them the most. If you're going to buy a leaf blower, you don't have to buy any of these. You can buy any leaf blower that you want. Almost assuredly, every leaf blower that you look at is going to publish two very high profile numbers on the box. They're going to publish the CFM rating and the MPH rating. So if you're shopping around, it doesn't matter if you're buying a battery powered or a gas powered leaf blower, a lot of your decision is going to come down to those two numbers. Which one's most important? Now, without beating around the bush, the most important number of them all by far is CFM, in my opinion. CFM really is kind of like saying this, how many horsepower is in the car. This is what the water pressure is at my spigot. Each individual machine, whether it's a gas powered machine or a, uh, or a battery powered machine, the motor or engine, whatever is in the thing, only has so much power behind it and it can only produce so much air. The so much air is the CFM. How much air can it put out every minute? Cubic feet per minute. If I remove the, the nozzle off of my blower, this is, this is a fixed thing. I could do that for every single one of these. The CFM rating is how much air can this thing put out through this little spot every minute. Now the MPH has to do with how fast it's traveling. So imagine if you have like a big like jug of milk and you pour it out. How fast can you pour it out? Well, you can pour it out slow, you can try to pour it out fast, but at some point it can only go out so fast because of the bottleneck, the bottleneck of the opening. Here comes my cat. Now, as we put a bottleneck on it, the bottleneck here is now smaller over here. So as the bottleneck gets smaller, we've actually introduced some resistance into the equation. So the cubic feet per minute goes into this, it meets resistance, and it actually speeds up coming out. So usually what you're gonna find is these smaller tips have higher MPH ratings, even in the instances where the cubic feet per minute are smaller. So of the four that I have here, this Ego is a 650 CFM. This will put out 650 cubic feet per minute. And the nozzle is just about the smallest one of them all. The MPH rating is 180 when this thing is on and you're using it on the highest setting possible. This Toro unit, however, has a much larger opening. It's a 605 CFM rating, but because the nozzle is so much, so much bigger, the MPH rating is far lower than it is for this one. Now, if I were to take the tip off of this, now my opening is bigger. You're not gonna get 180 mile MPH with a larger tip. You would need a larger motor or power source to continue driving that. Now, as I pull this machine out, this of the four that I have on display here, this is the lowest CFM. And it also happens to have a very wide spout, kind of like the Toro unit. So as you would expect, the miles per hour, the MPH rating is easily the lowest of all four of these. It's only 98 miles per hour. Compared to this, which has a higher CFM and a narrower tip, this one gets up to 180 miles per hour. Now, why do I say CFM is more important than MPH? Because higher CFM gives you more versatility in what you can do with your machine. I tend to use this Toro almost all the time in my lawn. My number one alternative to the Toro in the lawn is my Greenworks Pro 80 volt. So notice I'm using two units, one with a smaller tip and one with a bigger. The bigger tip is going to push all of the CFM out into a broader spectrum blow, I guess. But if I wanna move something very precise, let's say uh, a plum that falls off my plum tree, I'm not gonna blow it as easily with this because the tip is wide. That's where getting something with a higher MPH 
using a narrower tip can come in handy. So if I wanna move one simple thing, that narrower tip is going to direct all of that same amount of air into a smaller space. It's gonna be traveling faster and it's gonna be more likely to move, say for instance, a plum on the ground or an apple or something heavy, maybe a wet leaf stuck to a paver or the pavement or something like that. Now, leaf blowers don't just move leaves or fruit that have fallen from trees. You can very easily use them to clean up grass clippings and dust off of your off of your pavers. I've used them in my property to clear standing water off of the ground. I've used them to clear snow off of my car. Shoot, I've even used them to be a silly dad. I've blown up swimming pools with them and swung my kids on the swing. To do different tasks, you want a higher CFM so that you can then change the nozzle out if you need wide disbursement or narrow focus. So something like this has narrow focus, but I can remove the tip and get a wider focus with this. Same thing as I can do with this one. I can remove the tip and have a wider focus. When you're moving leaves on the ground, you need something wide. You don't need something gigantic unless you're moving a huge pile of wet leaves that you've already raked up. Then you might need something stronger, something more direct. But when you're using a blower that has high MPH, it's actually gonna take you a lot longer to do whatever job it is you're doing simply because you're, it's like a laser targeted at a very small area, especially the smaller tip that gets. Obviously, I've got leaf blowers. I even have other leaf blowers in the garage. Part of my job is to compare pieces of equipment for people like you. Now, if you are in the market for a leaf blower, I recommend that you go down into the description below and follow the link over to my website where I've compared these blowers and some of the others. I also have a video on the topic, which is linked up here if you're in the market to buy a blower. If you take this information down to your local big box store, take a look at the packaging. In almost all cases, all you have to do is look at one number, the CFM rating, and then figure out if it's got multiple attachments because multiple attachments and a high CFM rating is gonna give you the best bang for your buck.